Labor's been urged to curb negative gearing as well as capital gains concessions. Member for Parliament Andrew Wilkie has recently called the Albanese government to use its political currency to try and curb negative gearing as well as capital gains concessions for housing investors. Andrew Wilkie says Labor needs to be brave. This is following the release from the latest annual rental affordability index showing Hobart has become the least affordable city in which to rent a home. The report also called for curbs on accommodation marketplace Airbnb, saying it resulted in a loss of hundreds of long-term rental properties. 2016 and 2019, Labor went to the federal election with policies to scrap negative gearing for new homes only and to cut capital gains tax deductions from 50% to 25% for investors who had properties for less than 12 months. After the 2019 election loss, it's believed these policies contributed to the significance of the result. But Mr Wilkie urged Labor, now in government, to once more make the case for these curbs which is aimed to increase housing affordability. Mr Wilkie says that changes to tax treatment doesn't have to be a blunt instrument, but could be grandfathered so they'd apply. For example, to an investor that purchased a property after the laws had changed. I guess this is a really complicated issue with a lot of different moving parts at play. And for any changes, there's always going to be second and third order consequences. For example, the Urban Development Institute of Australia believes that any changes to existing negative gearing or capital gains tax regimes will be detrimental and result in a reduction in housing supply, which will put enormous pressure on governments to potentially fund billions of dollars of supply and manage of rental accommodation and social housing. Which it does make sense, it's all a balancing act here. On one end, there's a huge housing affordability issue for a lot of those trying to get in the marketplace. But on the flip side, there are investors that hold investment properties and are losing money and the tax incentives they get make it palatable for them to hold on to these investments. In the case where negative gear or capital gains was removed, you might start to see some of those investors decide not to participate in the marketplace, instead moving their funds elsewhere. And once again, creating a second and third order consequence where that gap in the market, where those properties were once available to rent are no longer available, therefore increasing rents and making rents even more unaffordable. The Urban Development Institute of Australia analysts showed that negative gearing did increase the cost of apartments by up to 4% and housing on the outskirts of Sydney by 0.1%. We know negative gearing does have an impact on the values of properties, but removing altogether could potentially have far dire consequences and would need to be something that would be thoroughly thought through before any changes are made. Complicated issue with so many different intricacies there. There's no simple answer here and housing affordability is certainly a very big issue at the moment that needs to be addressed. I guess this is one idea that might help or hinder housing affordability with unintended consequences. I'd definitely be interested to hear your thoughts below in the comments. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And here at Hunter Galloway, we get home loans approved. So if you're looking for a great mortgage broker, hit us up at huntergalloway.com.au or call us on 1300 08065. And we'll see you next time.